Uh, for anyone catching the VOD uh, afterwards, uh, I want to let you know that we'll start about the 5 minute mark. Until then, we just get to sit and wait until uh, people start trickling in, so we can start get going. We're going to get started in about uh, two minutes here with the actual gameplay. Uh, today we're going to be doing the uh, Vinland Saga historical battle. So, the last stream we did one Viking Age stream, now we're going to do the other one. I've got pulled up here also the uh, sagas of Eric the Red and the Saga of the Greenlanders, so Eirik Saga Reida and Greenlandinga Saga and some information on Lanto Meadows, just very basic layer. So we can take a look at where they're pulling the absolutely weird design decisions uh, in this game from in order to be able to talk about the actual sagas and how they're trying to make this playable. Okay, here we go. Historical Battles and Vinland Saga. At some point we'll do Hastings as another one. That one's also going to be weird. And then we can slowly move our way down. But for now, more Vikings. In the gloom, the longhouse feels empty. But it is filled with the odors of rust, tar, and animal fur, and the snoring of dogs. It is the man named Eric who speaks. Smacking scarred fingers together for emphasis, the steam of his breath mingling with the wood smoke. He fills the men's heads with legends of exploration and raiding, of a sea that eats longbows, and an undiscovered country ripe for Viking occupation. He tells the Vikings that they can leave their frigid homeland 
and sail across the endless sea of worms to a new world brimming with wild grain, grapes, and whole trees. To the Vikings, he speaks of paradise, and of course the grizzled Norsemen are always eager for adventure. When he asks for volunteers, men slam their weapons on tables and shout his name in the cold air. Eric the Red smiles. So we've already got something completely wild and uh, coming from nowhere. Eric the Red was not aware that Vinland in existed until the very, very end of his life. Uh, and he never actually personally went. We'll see. Well, this game completely screws that up, but... What he did do was, much in the way described there, is persuade people to go to Greenland. Still, here's our objectives. Transport Eric the Red west across the ocean to the New World and establish a colony there. And Eric must survive. Helpful. Uh, Eric the Red is restricted to the Castle Age and 100 people. And skulls tell of an ocean where worms eat away at the hulls of wooden ships. And the resources in Iceland will run out. He must colonize other lands to provide for Eric the Red's followers. By Highlander. So, our scouts say that the Vikings under Eric the Red have few buildings and only a handful of berserks to defend themselves from ravenous wolves. Although we are safe from attack for the moment, Vikings from Greenland may raid our shores. The Britons have little what's in the way of a standing army, so they are ripe for raiding, and Greenland is more of a mystery, though it is known that the Vikings have many longboats. And a race of wild men are rumored to live in the New World. So, we can start completely crazy uh, here. One thing that really bothers me is the statement of establishing a colony. And ripe for... Uh, what is it? In the hints, you must colonize other lands. This kind of thinking of colonization and of resource extraction is completely anachronistic. Uh, that is very much Euro European modern conceptions of what it's like to interact with other people. For the Vikings, uh, it would be land now. Settlement. Literally land taking, but best translated as settlement. So not something that is done uh, primarily for resource extraction, but is primarily done for people to live. So, we're already breaking uh, historical mentalities here, and in the interest of the game fulfilling its go from one place, conquer other places mentality. We'll get to the ocean, the Sea of Worms later, but yeah. Also, a uh, nice other fun thing. A handful of berserks to defend themselves from ravenous wolves. In Iceland. We are in Iceland, uh, in this corner of the map. There are no wolves in Iceland. There have never been wolves in Iceland. They're in mainland Scandinavia, yes, but yeah, the idea of having to defend ourselves from wolves is non-existent. Uh, that just makes no sense. The reason Eric uh, left Iceland was not because of a lack of resources, or not, and um, wasn't because of a uh, lack of supporters. It was because he uh, killed a man and had to go into uh, or bail from the country so as not to get outlawed and killed. So, yeah, the circumstances underlying this uh, scenario are already completely off the wall, anachronistic, and ahistorical. But that's okay. We are starting out here in the feudal age. Oh wow, that is an immensely Icelandic accent. So, good job. Hello? 
Um, somewhere. Well. Build enough long ships for this journey. We'll need gold and lots of it. There's plenty in the fishing villages of Britain for the Lili king. Bar Daga. Then we're going to build a mining camp out here to get some stuff. And build a bunch more villages. Population is fine because we currently have... Well, plenty of... Plenty of people. Oh yeah, here's Eric the Red. Not super strong, but a lot of HP, and he regenerates them over time. Still, we're gonna collect some gold here. So, uh, where is Greenland attacking me from? I am... Oh, there's a scout cavalry out there. Okay. Oh, very odd. Well. Don't have enough wood for that, so we're just gonna... Have everyone, everyone go gather resources here. Well, my berserks go exploring. And try and get the outline. We'll try and get the outline of Iceland quite quickly because not, there's not very much of it. As you can see, the Icelandic coast is not very uh, well defined here. It's also very, very icy. Uh, this part of the country it was nowhere near this icy in the year 1000. Not even close. Uh, what we have here is... Looks, I mean, it looks like sea ice sea ice covering the fjords uh well we'll see we'll see i want to get the full outline of the coast to identify exactly where this is but where the castle is here should be Reykjavik. so let's see if we can get the outline clear enough yeah uh, I'll also build some fishing ships. Here. And as we outline the coast. We'll see. Put a few more of these guys. Yo. So yeah, this appears to be... More or less, uh, the coast of Reykjanes. So, yeah, if we assume that this one is Reykjanes here, then Reykjavik is right in here and going up here is around uh, Falfjörður so I don't know that that's quite a totally fair uh, way of looking at it and a totally fair assumption of how the land works but it's pretty close so Yeah, these guys are going to then build a farm. Nope, that's a house. There's... Hello, that's not a mill. I don't think. Well, no, it is. Okay. Well then. We shall put the mill somewhere. I don't know where. We'll put it near the castle so it protects us. 
Auf die Lage. Bill Eck. Ja. Bill Eck. And we're accumulating resources actually very quickly already. So. We should probably start also trying to build more units. Uh, we can't do anything with this yet because we're still in the quote unquote dark ages. But we will build another one of these guys, and all of these guys can build farms. Farms, farms, farms. Automatic reseeding because we have plenty of workers making resources there. And they can go on the coast. And we can build the barracks now because why not? And we're mostly waiting to gather food at this point before we do anything else. We're left at a pretty quiet moment, so let's take a look at this Iceland uh, a little more and see what we've got. By the year 1000, Iceland is completely settled. There is not a scrap of land where there is not a farm at this point, except in the very highlands where things generally suck. Uh, for the most part, uh, oh, you guys can back up. For the most part, uh, everywhere there is a coast, uh, or lowlands, there is a farm by the year 1000. So, this image of it as being empty is really very thoroughly anachronistic. And in fact, is kind of this perception makes Iceland seem unusually inhospitable and a very poor place to do anything. Uh, well, I'm getting shot at now. I found Britain, by the way. Uh, this is the coast of, well, Scotland. So we're going to have this guy go exploring, because that's helpful. But in the turn of the 11th century, uh, while well, Iceland, I would not say, is the most pleasant place on Earth to live, it never has been, it never will be, the... Uh, Yeah, we'll fish that. I'll build another... I'll build one more of these guys too instead. Be able to do things, and we're already very close to enough food to get up to the next age, which is going to be important for us. It lets us build a lot more... a lot more things. And we'll build a bunch of militiamen as well. Okay, I just set myself way behind. That's my bad. But that's okay, uh, we're going to keep exploring. Anyway, Iceland had no cities, no settlements of this type, uh, as close as this place gets to sit, this game gets to cities. But all along the fjords here, you'd have individual farms with individual farmhouses. And the place would be relatively decent, uh, weather wise, not, not amazing, but probably comparable to how it is now, so in the vicinity of uh, 10 to 15, sometimes into the 20s Celsius uh, along the coast, or in the summers, with full daylight, 24 hours. Uh, and in the winter, it would be, in this the southwest of the country there, it would hover around freezing, with very little daylight. But, uh, something else interesting and, uh, from this, re referring back to the sagas, uh, 
shoot through the hulls of our longships. We should sail clear of this place, even if it means crossing Greenland by foot. Anyway, uh, I was saying that. Oh, well, that's awkward. So much for that ship. Uh, but referring to the sagas here, this part of Iceland, the southwest corner of the country, which perhaps it's better to say that this is Reykjanes, and then, but this is then nothing. This is not how Icelandic geography works. So, whatever. But, uh, in the sagas, uh, both saga traditions agree, uh, Eirik the Red is from the, uh, after his father and he came from Norway, he settled in the area around Snæfellsnes, which is about here. I don't know uh, if you can see the cursor. I think it's supposed to be capturing that, but if you can see the cursor, it's off screen to the north here would be Snæfellsnes, which is where he is supposed to be from. So it's not very uh, reasonable for the way that they are uh, choosing which part of Iceland to show on the screen. It matches neither the saga tradition and in no way reflects actual Icelandic uh, geography or climate. Certainly, like this time of year, I can tell you, looking out my window, that the, the snow-covered mountaintops are reasonable, and in fact, right now it's snowed the last few days, but snow is somewhat irregular uh, in Iceland, and for, or in southwestern Iceland. And in this time of year, uh, well, this implies that it's winter right now, and we have no information about that, but it would be a bad time to go sailing, uh, in the winter. Most expeditions took place in the summer and came back in the fall, so not optimal. We'll do that, and we can also build one more person here to try and get an archery range. Once these guys upgrade, uh, I'll also be able to build a transport ship. Okay, archery range, check, come on, cooperate. So, we are building up, well, we have these men-at-arms now, uh, who are once again wielding maces, despite that continually not being how it works. Also, while we're waiting on things, because we still need more resources, uh, if you look at this berserker, he is just a bundle of stereotypes masquerading as a person. So, you can kind of see, he's got a, well, it's really hard to see, we'll zoom in on him as far as we can, but it's very hard to see. He's got a one-handed axe, which is fair, and this round shield with the red and white patterning, which is fair, and the rest of it is just a mishmash of things. Uh, he, for one, his helmet has horns, which is immediately a good warning that things are not quite right. Cool, I have no gold with, with which to build archers. Okay, so with no gold, we're going to need to just kind of accept our losses there, and focus instead on getting gold from the United Kingdom. So we'll load these guys all up into the transport ship. Okay. Well. We'll cross the river here and unload and then drop everyone else off. Nay, stand your ground. Come 
because we need as many of these guys as we can get in order to make it through. We've also got one idle person here, so let's try and build... Well, we'll go full anachronistic and also build a... No, let's not do that. Let's build a blacksmith instead. That's way more useful. And we will unload the rest of the team. And now we can go in a raid. Having suitably criticized Iceland, especially by the way this castle is uh, thir later 13th century uh, English or French design, and is utterly inappropriate for Iceland by every possible metric. So this one's going to be a lot of criticizing things. Uh-oh. We're already there? Oh, shit. So we have Ornolu, uh, who is causing us some problems. We will... He hits very hard, so we're just going to hide everyone away. And now we're getting attacked by other people. Well, that went poorly, but luckily the Britons also do not have the ability to defend from very close range, so that's going fine. Now, Arnlu is doing nothing, so we have three skirmishers. Sk skirmishers should be very good against Arnlu, we will see. Oh no, he's just going to stand there. He's just going to take it. Oh. We need to back off, because they are in trouble. And most of my berserks have died, so... Some trouble here. We are down to four people to try and take on the rest of these people. So, rather than trying to take on all of the British forces, which we don't need to do at all, we're just going to go around the coast here and burn these markets. We take out the markets and the rest of it is no trouble at all, because we get the gold. And the gold will let us do the rest of it. In the meantime, uh, we took out the King of the Wolves, who can take on an army of Norsemen. We, uh, we took care of them. And Eric is fine, so we get to keep going. Uh, this is somewhat more reasonable. Uh, in the year 1000, Britain definitely had some defenses against raids. Uh, specifically, they had a series of fortifications or Burr uh, along the borders of the Danelaw that would basically be about two days journey apart so that regardless of where there was reports of a raid, within a day, uh, an army could get in and help fight them off. So this kind of rough approximation with the towers guarding the coasts is much more reasonable for the defenses that existed than the descriptions of... Cool. We got 1100 gold in tribute, uh, we have no... We'll destroy this just for the fun of it, I think. Yeah, there's another market here, so we can break this and then take on this market and be fine. With 1100 gold, though, we should be ready to enter the castle age, 
which is where we actually want to be to move on to the next stage of the game. Oh, okay, good. Because one thing that is sorely lacking here is uh, gold mines, which is fair. Uh, Iceland has no naturally occurring gold in it because the island is so young. One thing the island also did not have by the year 1000 was trees. It was when the Iceland was discovered, uh, the earlier reports of it say that they're... Well, we are not entirely sure that these are reliable, but the early reports do say that the island was covered in trees from the mountains all the way to the sea. These trees would be birch, not conifer, but still would have been completely covered with Uh, would have been completely covered with trees. That's in 870. By the year 1000, uh, it's pretty clear, and uh, pretty generally accepted, that the island was almost completely deforested, and so patches of woodland remaining were heavily coveted and heavily fought over, and, you know, very heavily desired because they were such a scarcity. So, we just got 1500 gold now to help stock up on our resources, and since we're now in the castle age we can build our unique uh, things. Our unique things in this case being long ships. Who is our idle unit? Okay, we are not worrying too much about the rest of this, though I will... No, I will build a uni... That's a monastery. We'll build a university here. Uh, where the anachronisms continue? Universities at this point uh, did not exist yet. They existed... Uh, I believe the first one had been founded in Fez just a few years prior to the events of this scenario. But that's in Morocco. Yep, I am just shitting on AoE too, Sark, so it's fun. We're doing historical battles. Specifically, we're doing the Vinland one. So far, I have criticized everything about Iceland and said that England is slightly less bad. <laughs> Good, I appreciate that. Oh yeah, can we get thumb rings? We cannot do thumb rings yet. That will help, because I'm going to get crossbowmen and build a whole bunch of archers. As soon as we get more food. I greatly appreciate the raid, because that's just super, super helpful. Uh, in this scenario, we are playing as Eric the Red, trying to get uh, to Vinland. Which Vinland is somewhere over here. Greenland is taking up the entire middle of the map. And the southern this southern corner is completely un not navigable. So we're in Iceland right now, in the worst Iceland depiction I've ever seen. And we just got eleven hundred gold from the coast of Scotland. No, more than that. Seventeen hundred gold from the coast of Scotland. So, we got thumb rings, and then we build a bunch of these guys. And our idle villager is going to go over there. Well, I don't need a whole lot from these. And we should be have plenty of people gathering wood. And we have plenty of people... Oh yeah, it's too snowy and too many conifer trees, though I am working on that. 
I am enacting Atlantic history by completely deforesting the island. Um, and it had wolves for some reason. For some strange and bizarre reason, Iceland had wolves. But, we are now going to go in search of Greenland with our longships while we stock up to take on the second half, the second challenge of the game, which is Greenland. I know. There were trees when at settlement, there are not trees by the year 1000 when this, uh, come on. Fine, we will build more houses. So, we go up along the edge of the world here, and soon we should hit Greenland, which Greenland is way too settled. Uh, Alright, so we'll do. We should be able to find food and wood here to replenish our feet. Well, according to both Eirik Saga Reda and Greenland Saga, Eirik the Red uh, was trying to go to Norway af again after he was uh, encouraged to leave Iceland before things go poorly. Well, my longships are great at shooting people. So, this was a pretty good idea, but a storm blew him off coast, of course, and he wound up in, uh, he wound up in Greenland, so he got blown the complete wrong direction. Which is really unfortunate for him. Uh, ah, there we go. There's one that we can completely melt. So, yo. He was the one who discovered Greenland and the one who decided, you know, this is a good idea. We should, uh, we should try and get people to live here, because this seems like a place where he can be in charge. Uh, not deal with all of the problems of the rest of society. And so he did. Uh, and both sagas agree. Uh, this is probably drawing on the same, either one bard from another, or they're a case where they're both drawing on the same tradition that he named it Greenland so that it would seem better for people to go visit. It worked. Uh, though, it is worth mentioning, uh, Greenland did probably have trees in the 11th century. Like Iceland, these trees were probably birch and only existed in lowland areas, uh, south of the glaciers. But they existed. So that's way better than most, I think, most people expected. Though the, that's what the paleoecologists say. I'm not so sure on what the uh, rest of the, oh, I need more houses, fine. Not so sure uh, if that's accurate. The uh, certainly the saga sources do not mention Greenland as being very pleasant. So we uh, they do their best, and then. Uh, it worked, and I believe they say like it's 20-something ships sail with him on the initial attempt to get to Greenland, and half of them do not make it. The ones that do not make it all uh, get the 
get either blown up cars and end up back in Ireland, or are completely decimated and are lost at sea. Which goes quite poorly. Uh, still, there ends up being two settlements made in in Greenland by Eric the Red uh, and by his Norse companions. There is the Eastern Settlement, which was made first, and is shockingly on the east side of Greenland. Then there is the Western Settlement, which is a little bit later, uh, and is on the very southern end of Greenland. A little bit on the western coast, but for the most part it's on the... it's more south than it is west. So, having done that, a, uh, He ends up being in charge at those settlements, the de facto leader, and is pretty well respected. That being said, life in Greenland objectively kinda sucked. Still, uh, in both sagas, they suffer because uh, they end up getting... Hmm. Where is my other transport ship? I thought I had two of them. Weird. Anyway. We can load people up onto this one. We'll get, we'll get there in a moment. Uh, we should probably build one more, actually. So then we're going to load up and we're going to ship over to Greenland. Since we're running low on gold again, we need some place to mine some more of that up. So we're just going to keep building and we'll be fine. We're also bringing one villager so we can build a siege engine workshop and take on Greenland as quickly as possible. It'll be good. Notice, we did not colonize uh, this area at all. We built zero buildings, we just kind of showed up, stole their stuff, and left. But, we just need to not let Eric the Red die, wherever he is. There he is, he's in this one. Okay. I will let these guys go, and they can settle in here. Nope, that's where it's full. Okay, can they both get on this one? Nah. Fine. These three guys will load into here. I will actually take one of these, or both of these villagers with us. Because we need uh, more villagers too. So, we have our Icelandic delegation is going to go over to Greenland. Way up here. And we will settle in on the coast and avoid dealing with the Sea of Worms. So, this game obviously screws up in a pretty big way by making Greenland a different faction than Eric the Red. Because that's contrary to every scrap of history we have. Uh, Certainly our saga narratives very strenuously disagree, and not just the ones about Vinland, Eric Saga Reida, and Greinlandinger Saga, but by every metric, uh, and every saga that mentions Greenland, they, well, we should also drop the villagers, uh, and everyone else can go with, well, no, that doesn't work, because let's just have the Berserkers do it. All the Berserkers can go attack here, no big deal. And all the crossbowmen can attack this guy. 
And we burn that down very quickly. And we can build another uh, lumber camp here. And you can see there's gold on this side of the mountains. I actually will have one of these guys uh, built to help defend us. We're going to break all sorts of historical realism and build a castle. Once we find a ground that we can do it on. Uh, okay, give us a moment to explore. If we bust that down, then we should be able to build a castle somewhere around... No, still can't. Okay, we will be able to look down here. Which is helpful. Still, I'm not super happy about that, so... Greenland is very certainly aware of our presence, but we don't really care about that. We just need to find a way around uh, to get into a defensible position to build our castle. So we're just sending a de small delegation around to take care of them and then, well, try and make this work. Luckily, Greenland is not very scary, it seems. So, we don't need to totally defeat them, though there is actually a bonus if we do, so we're going to try our best. But, you can see we're on the very bottom of Greenland already. The eastern settlement would be around where I am, and the western settlement is around here, where we're fighting this watchtower. Because now we're back into open ocean. Now, in medieval thought, uh, there's something I actually like about what this game does. Uh, uh, there's very few things about the scenario that I like, but one cool part of the design that actually works quite well is... Is that, uh, whoa, where the hell are you going? Nay. That is the worst way to go around. Uh, and both of you can actually do the same thing. Go over here. And all of our villagers are gonna completely screw over uh, this area by building a castle there. In our technology where no buildings were made out of, uh, no buildings were made out of stone in the 11th century Viking, Viking Age. So there, yeah, we're just breaking this historical accuracy completely, and obviously this many trees is breaking historical accuracy completely. But that's okay. We're going to avoid breaking the game the worst, and building, uh... and going and building uh, stables and using cavalry, though it is undeniably really effective. I'm just going to self-impose that restriction. Because we don't need it. We're in a position where we do not need that in order to restock, build around the other side. Exactly. Like, this scenario is fun, it has a really nice progression, but as a uh, history game, as playing history, uh, even historical narratives about history, it's very garbage. It's very poorly done by every measure. So. Greenland does not work this way, but Greenland also kind of sucked to live. Oh, I was going to praise the game very faintly, wasn't I? Uh, in the map, Greenland runs completely over the edge of the map. We don't know how far it goes. 
That is as far as things go. One of the most historically accurate things they could do. Which is rather sad. Uh, not really high, high praise here. Anyway, all these guys are going to build a mining camp. Mining camp. Uh, and we have our foothold. So, we're going to feed one of these ships to the edge of the world. Just to see how far we get. It's not very long, far, at all. We actually end up doing quite badly. We end up uh, going into the Sea of Worms and getting completely trashed. You can see here where the ship is. We're going to keep track of this guy and kaput. So yeah, the southern edge of Greenland is no good for sailing. So there's like a huge amount of this map that is completely useless. We're going to defeat Greenland because then Greenland gives us a map that lets us uh, see see the consequences of our actions and see the entire sea of worms. But still, uh, continuing with the references to the sagas, uh, living in Greenland was difficult and really kind of sucked. Uh, let me actually, you're gonna see the game pause for a minute and the audio might cut out because I'm switching tabs to look at the translation I've got of Eric Sagaroida and deal with it. While they're doing that, I'm going to do this. And so, when we're looking at this, uh, the, where is it? There is a great, uh, do to do uh, plague in Greenland. So, and uh, one of the victims of that is uh, Thorstein Eriksson, so Eric the Red's oldest son. And yeah, everyone gets ill, and nothing can be done for any of them until the plague just runs its course. And a lot of people died. A lot of very important people died. That scene serves mostly as a kind of like paranormal uh, paranormal event because uh, in that scene hang on, I need to switch back to my scenes here there we go uh, Thorstein, after he dies, shows up to his wife and just kind of goes like, oh yeah, I'm still totally alive or here I am did do you miss me? Come, come say hi. And uh, she understandably freaks out. And her husband then goes, no, no, don't be afraid. God, let me come back to prophecy your future. Nay, do the thing. And so he prophesies that she's going to do very well for herself and end up not staying in Greenland. She's going to get the hell out of town. And she eventually does. Uh, the last expedition to Vinland is led by a man named Karl Sefni, who marries uh, Sigrid Thorstein's, uh, at this point, ex-wife, uh, or Thorstein's widow. And so manages to do okay and be like, you know, we... We managed, and from that uh, actually does pretty well uh, for herself. She, a lot of illustrious people in the 13th century claim to be descended from Eric the Red in that regard, or related to Eric the Red and through Karl Sapney's wife, Thorstein Eriksson's widow. So yeah. So much for that. So, 
Another example of how hard it was to live in Greenland comes from earlier in the saga, where there's a great famine and bad weather. And they go, uh, how long will this last? And so they go find a seeress who was in Greenland, uh, one of our only descriptions of a seeress, period, uh, anywhere in Iceland and or anywhere in the Norse world. We know they existed, but this is one of the few actual descriptions of them we have. And so, they actually do quite well for themselves. Um, hang on, let me research more ways to beat up on... There we go. Completely mark these guys, uh, mark this guy. Unfortunately, like, just draining these guys of resources takes a long ass time. So, we'll take, uh, some of, well, one of you should build a, another town center, uh, here we'll say. So we can get more people over. Say, aren't these guys supposed to have like 100% accuracy? And kill another one there. And all our crossbowmen are the main mayor. Really? Crossbowmen, please? Why are they all bad? Um, well, that's no big deal. Wow. Okay, we're slowly, slowly taking out the number of villagers here. Sadly, my crossbowmen all screwed up quite badly. And there's another castle. Okay. So that's about as close as we're gonna get right now. But we have another town center, which means we can make more villagers. And you are going to build me a siege engine workshop. Because we have two castles here to deal with, which is very bad news. 
And you are going to build us a guard tower so that they can't. We build guard towers up so that nothing can actually happen. Though, what some of these guys are doing is a complete mystery to me. We'll build three battering rams, that should be enough. So, let's see. Uh, siege, sieges in the Viking Age, I guess? Uh, they existed, most famously. Whoa, sorry. That may have done weird things. Apologies for that. Well then, that went well. See if we can't recover that sufficiently, or if that's going to crumble. Still, they are putting a lot of energy into trying to deal with these, and they're sending, spending all their resources on trying to build more Alpha Zerkaras. Which just does not work well. Where the hell are you going? Nay. Stop it. I really dislike the AI limitations of this game because there's no good way to tell them to defend an area. No. I want them to guard this. Also, where is Eric? Jesus, what the fuck is happening? Well, that went a bit disastrously, but that's okay. That's okay, we finally finally outdid them uh, of a sort. So, that was a hot mess, but you know, we managed. They managed somehow. So. Sadly, I don't think we'll take on these guys completely uh, because of there's too many. Nay. Hey, do the thing. Uh, I hate how chaotic this thing gets. And also, they, they are cheesing the... Uh, building rate quite severely, because there is no way that they are building these guys that fast.
Hey, you who are injured, garrison. Well then, I have great complaints about the AI here. Still, we have almost taken out the second castle, which means that we are actually in a good position, contrary to what any of this may look like. Uh huh. The AI is just suicidal. What can you do? See? Luckily, they are just kind of uselessly throwing units at. Uh. at the army? Rather than doing anything at all sensible. Sieges, because they exist. Uh, the most famous siege, I think, probably ends up being. Nay, uh, the Parathic. The most famous of these sieges, I think, has to be the uh, Siege of Paris in 886. But there were other sieges in the Viking Age. Uh, one of the main tools of that kind of siege is the. Uh, well, we'll put these guys constantly under threat. And you'll wait. Nay! And yeah, they should pretty much uh, take care of Greenland, which actually means we're actually making progress really well. These guys are just doing their thing. We've got lots of gold right now, so we can build up whatever we want. Though I will obviously need to scour the area to make sure No one else exists. Well. Still, these battering rams, uh, I guess, like, aren't plausible. There's nothing really saying that they couldn't or shouldn't exist. It's just... Uh, in the sieges, it seems that more frequently, the important thing is the uh... Sorry, these guys should burn everything. These guys should be faster. Uh, let's build up here. Not there. Uh, there. Oh, we already got it. Good. They move faster, so we're fine. There we are. Thank you. So yeah, as I said here, uh, like Greenland, Oh, Greenland completely gave up, so yeah. Greenland here stretches beyond the limbs of the map, and this is the most accurate part of the game so far. Because, well, it doesn't show it, but between Greenland and Vinland, here, we have a few things. Uh, we have Hetkeland and Markland. Which are supposed to thought to correspond to Baffin Island and Bear Island now. So just two very inhospitable places. Uh Hefferland is very flat with uh flat stones, and Markland has sheer cliffs. So two very inhospitable places. But it was uncertain where these came from. So there were thoughts that maybe these were all connected, that they're one landmass uh, all the way down. Or, because Eirek Sagaroyda uh, mentions a Skraling uh, as a Shiapod, a one-footed creature. I believe it's Eirek Sagaroyda. Uh, let me actually double-check that. 
It's one of the one of the two. Um, good to do. Yeah, it is. It's chapter uh, fourteen of Eric Sagarida says that they ran into a one-footed creature and attacked it, and it attacked them. Still, we've got plenty of resources there, so we actually head all the way up here. And, so, because of that, uh, Sheopods, well, this was probably done by the saga author as a way to indicate how far different, uh, the saga or the effects of uh, the saga are. So, how far away Vinland is, how dangerous of a place it is. Because a Shiapod is one of these so called Plinian races, uh, first described by Pliny the Elder, hence why they have that name. Uh, they are creatures who are thought to live at the end of the world, related to humans but themselves fairly monstrous. So, if they exist there, then, uh, that leaves on our people, uh, it makes Iceland and Greenland more central, because they can go less far, uh, they're still close enough to the real, to Christendom, that the norm that everyone there is normal humans. So by comparison, it makes Greenland uh, closer to Europe, and because it's closer to Europe, that makes it actually a better place to be uh, ideologically. But uh, Shiapods were normally said to live in Africa. So, the natural assumption uh, is that Vinland and Africa are connected, that somehow the continent stretches all the way around the southern sea and ends up way up north again. Wait, where is... I'm missing uh, Eric the Red. Where did he go? Are any of these guys, Eric? No. Seriously, I, lo I lost my main character. <laughs> Where the heck is he? Not there, not there. None of these places. Um. Well, this isn't good. So those are the two guys there. Yeah, that's that. That's that. That's that. Where did he go? This is terrible. I'm so confused. Does anyone know where he went? Well, in the meanwhile, I guess we'll build an archery range as well out here, so we can train archers. Um, because I can't win the game if he doesn't show up. So, uh, if anyone knows, sees him, uh, start spamming chat so I actually like pay attention. I am, there he is. Found him. Jesus. This gave me a heart attack there. So. Oh uh, yeah. Vinland is connected to Africa, definitely. But still it's called Vinland in Godi. So Vinland the Good. Also was agreed to be a pretty good place to live.
with this oh so good place to live, uh, there were a few expeditions. The first one uh, was completely accidental. Uh, the first one was technically was when Leifer Eriksson uh, rescued some sailors led by one Bjarni Herjolsson, who said he saw, well, he saw Hetluat, this island that uh, looked very inhospitable, and he decided, no, we should not land there. He sailed past it and then got shipwrecked closer to Greenland. So we, that worked, and he went to Greenland and survived. Uh, got rescued by Leifer Eriksson. Leifer then uh, persuaded his father that, you know, it was a good idea that we should go out and we should find this supposed see what was out there. And hopefully maybe find somewhere else we could live. On the way out, according to, I think it's uh, Greenlandiga Saga, double checking on that, that's do 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 do. Uh, there's Bjartne. There's yo. Um, yo. In Grandmaninga Saga, Eric complains about being old, and then goes, "All right, fine, fine. I'll do it." And that's going great. Uh, up until. Uh, on the way out, he's his horse trips and he sprains his ankle. It literally says bruises his foot, but that's probably what it's saying uh, is that it's a sprained it's a sprained ankle. So yeah, that went great. He just gives up and goes home and says, "Nope, I am not meant to travel to other lands." So Leifer goes. And makes it and finds Vinland the God, but and then goes home. And then his younger brother is like, No, I want to make a longer settlement there. And it's his younger brother that actually ends up having all of the trouble with the Skraelings. And so they go, you know, this is a terrible thing. Well, so that's a lot of houses to build. And we've got some very unhappy... Some very unhappy people. So we'll build the market. Somewhere, where if I can find it, where the heck? There it is. And then everyone else is going to start trying to find the forces here. So it's Eric the Red's uh, third son that has runs in with the Skraelingar. The first few interactions with the Skraelings are peaceful, though, uh, hang on, let me, let me actually back up, uh, here at a moment and figure out exactly what his name was so I get the names right, so. do 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 Leif, Leif, uh, Thorstein. Uh, who then dies, uh, so yeah, it's Thorstein, uh, Eriksson. And according to Eric Sagarreida, it's not Carl Stephanie, that's the next voyage. Uh, Thorvald. It's Freydis, Eriksdottir, and Thorvald. And it's Thorfinner, Carl Stephanie. So yeah, Thorvald, the Thorvalds, and Freydis, and Carl Se Thorfinner, Carl Stephanie, all go. What are all these people doing? No, 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 houses. Cool. So there we are. We found a, we found Skraelings. Mm, we managed it. Uh, the Skraelingar here are 
Uh, well, these guys are just militia, but here Algonquian warrior. As they're using the uh, special class. Uh, the people found that uh, just build houses. Start building houses. Also you. What else do we have idle people? None of these guys. Anyway, uh, Thornvald very sensibly and Thorfinn and Karlsefni both go, yeah, don't... Do not uh, sell them steel. You can sell them anything else, but don't give them your weapons. And so they end up trading a lot of mostly meaningless things. Mostly meaningless uh, things. And the first few interactions are peaceful. Until they get spooked. And then they decide to take on... Uh, they end up actually scaring them off and the next interaction is violent. And uh, Thorvald, uh, the son-in-law of Eirik the Red, gets killed. He's the first and main casualty of this interaction. Well, let's try and outrun these guys building the houses. We're close. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're on house number seven. But we need a back off. Because that's a lot of a lot of bad guys. There we are. More houses. More houses. So we are right at the end of this stage. Uh, getting this, beating this the second time is way the heck easier than the first time. Still, uh, the Skraelings uh, end up being a big problem, and the settlement gets abandoned after not very long. Now, historically, uh, they used the Algonquian faction in this game as the main, the main like un faction for any and all interactions uh, with the Native Americans in this scenario. Historically, uh, it would not have been Native uh, Algonquian. That it's way too far south. The, it's it's Le Lefer Erikson, not Eric the Red. So good job, uh, game. You got even the most basic detail wrong. But we have met met everything, so we will return to the map. We got there. We are everything that's left. Just a few scrailings and these uh, town hall and area. So. Historically speaking, uh, the people in Vinland at this time would have been some kind of uh, probably either early First Nations or some kind of Inuit or uh, Thule people, uh, probably in Vinland. In Iceland at this time, there was the Dorset people. Uh, they actually interact, and possibly in Vinland as well, that the Skrælings may have been Dorset. The Dorset culture had fairly significant interactions uh, with Norse people in Greenland through until they went extinct sometime between 1000 and 1500, uh, and they were replaced by the Thule people. The One of the big indications we know that they did trade and they did have conflict is that uh, in the Archbishopric of Nidaros, Trondheim, 
up until the church burned down in the 16th century, there was a, uh, uh, words, there was a canoe that we, is, was most likely Dorset. So we have actually a Dorset canoe in Norway as a, that was sent to them from Greenland. There's a few other vague indications, um, let me find the, um, do, 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 do. actual interactions, uh, doesn't, it's very hard to say, um, still, they were unrelated, uh, to unrelated to any currently living people uh, in the wit in Northern Canada or Greenland. So it's a completely genetically unrelated group that no longer exists. These are the most likely group. Um, they were described as being fairly small. Uh, and so possibly that this is where some of the ideas of the scrailing are being more like the Plinian races, comes from them being a very short statured people certainly much shorter than is the case with the, uh, than with the Vikings and with Norse populations. So, that's this interaction. Uh, after Carl Stephanie leaves, there's not another serious attempt to uh, colonize Vinland or to set up a new settlement in Vinland. Uh, that it's about 1014, so 14 years after Leif or Erikson first lands, that the whole project gets abandoned. The last voyage, according to Eirik Sagarreida, is by Freydis Eriksdottir, who uh, quite famously scares off some Skraelings in the previous voyage by stealing one of the men's swords, uh, uh, who was killed. Stole the sword of a dead Norseman uh, when she was being chased by three Skraelings, and according to the saga, buried her breast and threatened to chop it off with the sword, and that spooked the Skraelings and they ran away. It's completely ridiculous, um, and Freydis is definitely not perceived kindly for it. She's perceived as pretty much insane. And the next voyage goes even worse, because she ends up killing every, pretty much everyone else, uh, the other two leaders of this voyage, in order to get, bring back more wood, mostly, uh, as the material wealth of the area. More wood for herself. So by self enrichment she commits pretty significant murder and kills the crews of two of the ships that traveled with her. The great person. Uh, now, the Sea of Worms here. Oh, that's not mythology. That's like legend bordering into history. That's something a person who definitely existed might have done, and is completely crazy. Now, this one here, uh, the Sea of Worms. The symbol they use looks an awful lot like it's supposed to be Midgard's Ormer, uh, Jormungandr, the Midgard Serpent. And this, when I first played this, I thought this must be completely made up. And um, this is just so that you can't sail around the coast and win the game in 30 minutes. This is actually real. Uh, ish. So, notable, there's a notable absent here, absence here called Ireland. Uh, Ireland just does not exist in this map. But in Eirik Sagarreida, in like the very last chapter, uh, it says that there is a place west of Green west of Ireland where sea worms like to eat the hulls of the ships. And on the way back from the last voyage, one of the ships gets blown off course and ends up there. And so the worms start burying, burrowing their way into the hull. The way they deal with this is by covering the... Uh, covering the hull of the ship with the fat of a seal. But they had no seals nearby, so they were just screwed, and they only had enough stock of fat for a single dinghy. 
And so the group ends up drawing lots. And the captain and half the crew is like ends up drawing a ship for the dinghy. And they're like, okay, that's covered in sea in seal fat, the worms will not attack it, you can get back to Greenland that way. But uh unfortunately it goes quite badly and so Bjartni uh Bjartni Grimmelson, who's the captain there, uh says that he's part of the group that's originally going to survive. But, a young Icelander then says, but Bjartni, you promised to protect me, you promised my mother that, or, uh, you promised my mother that I, you would protect me and you would not separate yourself from me. And so Bjartni was like, fine, trade, take my place. And so Bjartni voluntarily drowns, uh, in order for this, his companion, uh, this young Icelander to survive. So that goes well for him. Uh, but Bjartni, uh, the saga ends, on um, both sagas, and with Karl, uh, Thorfinnur Karlsefni going and Returning to Iceland and becoming highly influential there in the court, as far as there is a court, uh, in on the farmstead of Snorri Godi of uh, Snæfellsnes, and it says many famous Icelanders are descended from him. And that ends the story of the uh, Nar settlement. There's a lot more I was going to say about, but of course, obviously with. The map took way less time the second time around than it did the first. So, uh, we'll actually talk a little bit longer here, uh, about, as I load up, we'll do, I think, part of another one. We won't finish it, because that would be a very long stream. But, uh, while I load up the Battle of Hastings, I will talk a little bit about American uh, reactions to the Vinland settlement, specifically uh, 18th and 19th century Americans really wanting the Vikings to have landed in the coast of the United States. Much of the Viking history is recorded in oral accounts called sagas, passed down through generations. Two of the most famous sagas are reserved for the adventures of Eric the Red and his men, who crossed the mighty sea in tiny ships to forge a new Viking sovereignty. Vinland, as the new world was called, was not kind to the Vikings. Although they lacked the iron weapons of the Norsemen, the native Skraelings were fierce warriors who fought relentlessly to defend their homeland against the Norse invaders. The vastness of the North Atlantic cut the Vikings in Newfoundland off from their homeland, and they suffered many long years. Also, no. They weren't cut off, they went back every couple years. They weren't, like, this... From a historical standpoint, this does a terrible job at actually portraying the sagas, and a bad job at communicating the actual history. Because the thing I did not mention, that obviously is important, is that the site of Vinland and of the Norse settlement appears to have been Lansau Meadows, which was discovered in the 1960s in northern Newfoundland. We know, because there are butternut squash seeds uh, at the site, we know that they made it farther south, probably into the Bay of St. Lawrence. So, this happened, there was contact, and this was built on a site that was already inhabited uh, prior to uh, underneath Lantau Meadows, the north site, there is a uh, early First Nations site, so signs of habitation all around. So, that part is real history, but it was not nearly as isolated as we would suggest. Oh, I did not want to return to the map, I wanted to return to battles. So, 
it was done so that we could uh, that 14 year experiment was really quite um, well weird hang on give me just a moment So, in it definitely stuck in people's memory. Uh, while there's not a lot of evidence in the Middle Ages that the sagas of Vinland, so Erik Saga Reida and the Grænlendinga Saga, were known outside of Iceland, uh, in the modern period, as interest in Norse culture and nationalism intersected, there was a really big spread of interest in wanting to claim that the original inhabit inhabitants were Norse, were Germanic peoples, uh, as opposed to Columbus being this southern, obviously uh, in the minds of the 19th century, early 19th century, inferior uh, genetic stock. This is utterly disgusting bit of nationalism that can't you can't just talk about it without uh, acknowledging the real atrocities of talking about uh, how Italian Americans were treated, how Irish Americans were treated, and the theories floating around Europe and America at this time uh, that would end up resulting in Nazi ideology. So there's the, was this belief, uh, as I start loading this up, I'll talk over it, I hope you guys can hear it. Uh, you know, we'll let this play while we load this and then I'll keep talking. So I don't know that we'll finish this. Uh, because I only have about another hour where I'm able to stream, but we'll at least get started on uh, the Battle of Hastings as well. Okay. So, we'll let it sit here for a bit uh, as I continue talking about the 19th century instead. There's this disgusting theory floating around Europe at the start of the 19th century, and really all throughout it, that basically you can divide Europe into three different uh, into three different groups. You have Nordic peoples, you have Alpine peoples, and you have Mediterranean peoples. And clearly, the Nordic peoples are the uh, were regarded to be the purest uh, genetic stock, again, this is utterly disgusting, and so uh, had a lot of the qualities associated with the noble savage, and were uncorrupted by Roman ideals. Alpine people were better, these are like Swiss and Austrian and uh, to some extent Czech, uh, that have kind of banned, and they were pretty good. And then there's Mediterranean, who clearly have the are the worst of the Europeans. And so there was a real desire in America with a bunch of white English Protestants, which again, that's also tied into that. Uh, the Protestant, Protestant Germanic countries are good, Catholic countries are bad. So, and then you create a bunch of pseudoscience to justify that. It's really horrifying. So, what they did was um, 
Hmm. Well then. They tried really desperately to find the site of North Settlement in Vinland. One of the most popular places uh, suggested was Newport, Connecticut. There's a lighthouse that by the 19th century was in ruins that dates to, well, a hundred years prior. It's, uh, it's an 18th century lighthouse built in the Dutch period of Dutch colonization in North America. So, what they did uh, is that was really popular, uh, and we're like, hey, look, this is a stone round building. It must be Viking. This is the spot. We found it. Not everyone was persuaded by that. Uh, some people tried to take the information in Grandlanding Saga and follow it exactly, and claimed it was just north of Boston instead of in Connecticut. Longfellow subscribed to the Connecticut uh, theory, and so Henry Wadsworth Longfellow uh, wrote a poem, The Skeleton in Armor, about a Viking warrior who was buried underneath the light, underneath this cairn that is a lighthouse from the 17th or 18th century. It is really quite quite appalling uh, the extent to which people went and used that to try and justify harmful ideologies. And there's no good way to talk about it. Uh, schools do like to just casually mention that Leif Eriksson wound up in Vinland in the year 1000, and so predated Columbus by almost 500 years. And then they completely failed to mention the rest of that. And so while the Settlement by the Norse in, in, from 1000 to 1014 did not really leave a mark in American uh, long-term American history. It existed and then it faded and never made it outside of Scandinavia. In the modern period, it has been hugely important to American identity. Uh, and used in the worst way to promote American superiority and to promote America as destined for white English people. It's really quite despicable and is something that we are still feeling the effects of in academic scholarship today. So, from this American foundational moment, let's turn to an English foundational moment. And the attack on Normandy. So, in the opening discussion there, it mentioned uh, Harald Hardrauva, uh, Heart of Council, and said that he's attacking from the north, while William is attacking from the south. This did actually happen. Uh, the Battle of Stamford Bridge in, near York was a fight between Harold the Saxon and uh, and uh, Harold Hardrada. Uh, Harold, I won't call him Harold the Saxon actually. Harold Godwinson is his name. So we have Harold Godwinson versus Harold the Hardrada. That happened in June uh, 1066, and three weeks later, the Battle of Hastings on the southern coast of England happened. So. He, Harold Godwinson had to march his entire army of mostly conscripts and farmers from the levies across England to fight two back-to-back -back battles against the most powerful of the Norse successor states. It's quite bad. He got very unlucky, but he nearly won both fights, which speaks to how resilient uh, his troops were, and how well disciplined they were. Until their ranks broke, they were on track to win both battles. Uh, Harold Hardrother died at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Harold Godwinson and most of the old in the uh, pre-Norman nobility get complete got decimated at Hastings, and so there was just no one left to oppose William by the end. 
So we have uh, we're going to see how they adapt this, and hopefully they do it a little bit better. Uh, at the time here, we have. And they wouldn't have had a French accent like that. Old French doesn't have that accent. Um, we'll start building farms. Farm, farm, nay. And um, farm, we've got plenty of yeah, it's okay, we're in the castle age already. We we'll, should have the ability to go up to the Imperial Age. Yep, we do. Cool. And we will go... No, not no. Uh, lumber camp. Just outside the city walls. There. And both of you will gather. What? Okay. Slowly start doing the things. Uh, we're going to have our scouts start scouting. So, uh, I am mostly working off memory here. This is... Hastings is... not... geographically the wrong spot. Well, my guy seems, seems to be better, which is good. Uh, let's see, do we have stables? We've got a blacksmith. Which is fine, we can do that. Um, William of Normandy, you and I have no quarrel. It's Harold the Saxon who's the enemy of us both. If you declare me an ally, I'll do likewise. Mm -hmm. Well, for the time being, I think we will do that. We'll actually go into the diplomacy menu for a rare change. Uh, confirm. So, they did the thing. It's great. So we'll figure out the coast of Normandy here as we go, and see how just how tiny uh, the coast is. So there's some gold there, which is good for us. Uh, gosh. And we'll build a mining camp out here to work on our gold supply. Oh wait, there's gold right in the center of our town. Let's do, let's do that gold first. So, we have Normandy here. And yo, so, fair warning, like, I am not super well versed in uh, Normandy... Norm Conquest, it's just, it's been a few years since I've looked at it in any depth. And I was not expecting to finish the Vinland scenario quite that quickly. Uh, first time it took me three and a half hours, so I assumed that that would be pretty close. Oh, great. Let's see, if these guys are just pikemen, it's no big deal. But if they're more dangerous, then. Yeah, we are totally fine. So, we're going to try and do this. But, if I am remembering correctly. Okay, these are the Huskarls. They're absolutely dunked on. And there's another light cavalry of the navy there. And we need to get the hell out of dodge, because that's not something we can really attack. So we retreat all the way back, and now we can start building uh, more 
things. Let's see, we've got a we've got a blacksmith already. We can do that. We can build up a barracks. We'll do it just outside of the city, I guess. It's gonna be crowded if we do it inside the city, and there's nothing out here. And you're going to build us a... We don't have a stable of any flavor, so we can... We need to get a stable, because... These guys are important. And then we need an archer... Well, can't do that, but we'll build a guard tower. And then we'll build more of this, so we can get a few more people... ...in... ...to keep going. Now! Uh, luckily Harald, uh, seems to, well, Harald has helped us a lot to finding out where the heck England is. Weirdly, you might notice, uh, oh, okay. Helpful. We'll have William go out, because William's got a lot of HP and a lot of armor. And he heals himself, which is way stronger. Well, m but my understanding of the reason for the, or stated reason for the invasion, is that, uh, Harold Godinson was shipwrecked, uh, in the 1040s, and in order to kind of survive. Uh, he was rescued by the Normans and wound up at the Norman court. And there, as kind of thanks of a sort for helping him out, uh, say, what the heck is this? Oh, that's me. Okay. Uh, as thanks for helping him out, uh, there was an agreement that uh, Harold were that Harold swore fealty to William, and so it, after Harold was crowned, uh, was crowned king, there was. An argument by William, but you know that that justifies uh, that William uh, clearly because of that oath of fealty, William should be qualified or allowed to become in charge. Oui. Ah, there they are, oui. and therefore he should give up his claim to the throne of England on the grounds that that is rightfully uh, Williams by virtue of the oath of fealty. Harold was not very persuaded by this idea, and so refused. And that is the stated justification uh, for invading. Yeah, 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 fine. Harold wins all those fights. Uh, the stated justification for Harold uh, or William invading England. Opinions were definitely mixed as to whether this was a valid reason. Uh, it was not straightforwardly yes, it was not straightforwardly no, and supporters of different people had different reactions. For the most part, it was kind of accepted that this was not, uh, certainly on the English side, it was accepted that this was not a legitimate justification, and William was kind of surnamed, was surnamed at this time the Bastard. Uh, he was an illegitimate son, and so he actually is 
officially a bastard who inherited the, the uh, Norman Norman lands. And so, you know, he's... Jesus, there are so many of them. And while William's good, I'm kind of starting to get worried for him. A lot of host carls. Well, still, no matter if we... We should win both fights. But it is very close, so we'll actually have William at this point uh, stand still while my knights... Uh, this guy should be fully healed. So we'll have him and him come join William. And William's going to just stand still and heal, because him losing by dying would be kind of embarrassing. Oh gosh, the farms are exhausted. Um, that's no good. Automatic farm receding, thank you. Is this one not being... Okay. This is bad. This is very bad. Uh, William should be faster than these guys, which is good. Wow, where do they all come from? Well then. They seem to be causing a havoc, so we will... We will deal with them. We'll put Harold in a castle to heal up. Well, we clearly need to break that quite quickly, because otherwise that's going to cause a real problem. Okay. Now, these guys need to do something. I think they go build a mining camp and start working on these tiny stone deposits. So, the, uh... Norman Conquest is definitely not a straightforward thing. Uh, it was very unclear for the longest time who would actually turn... end up... Uh... Very unclear who would end up successful and who would end up very dead. Uh, Obviously it turned out that Norman William won, and at the Battle of Hastings, uh, he actually nearly died. He, there was one point where William got knocked off of his horse, and his army started, thought he was dead. Uh, th this is right at near the end of the battle. So shortly before Harold Godwinson actually dies. Uh, William gets knocked off his horse and lost in the infantry skirmishes. And his army legitimately thought he was dead. And they all started panicking. Obviously not in the ideal circumstances for what you want from a, uh, an army because they would just rout if that happened. And William, to avoid that, actually had to take off his helmet, putting himself at great w risk to prove to his army that he was alive. Obviously that paid off pretty well for him in the end, but was a bad situation up until then. So, we definitely don't want to reenact that particular part of our 
of the Norman history, because that would go poorly. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll put you out there, and we'll put you out here. Now then, we'll build... Well, we'll build one more crossbowman. Now nah, we can build a couple more. We're getting a lot of resources now. And we're getting this quite nicely. We're seeing the entire English Channel, uh, Calais, and over here. And all the way down across here. The Isle of Wight is supposed to be this one here. And then that's supposed to be a staging ground for us to land here at Hastings. The geography in this one matches a lot better than in the last map we did. Still. Let's go get our revenge on these guys who nearly caused us a lot of grief uh, down here. Because we should be able to absolutely trash them now. I mean, William alone, as long as he's fighting one-on-one, -on -one, was able to take on almost everybody. So, m with this much support, William should have no problem crushing these guys. And I want to crush down here first, so we can finish exploring the coast, and then not have to worry about these Herald's Raiders causing issues. Now, obviously, historically, Harold was not doing any raiding along the coast like this. That's not not a thing that was being done. So he had no interest in trying to take out uh, William and had very little interest in uh, trying to claim the throne of Normandy. He thought William was illegitimate, and that his... because of that, his... Uh, his oaths were not, or did not have to hold, but he did not uh, think that uh that he was supposed to be in charge of Norway, or in charge of Normandy, sorry, and that there was any sort of problem like that. Now we're just prioritizing our units carefully, and take out the siege workshops first, because these, these guys are a problem. Scorpions do a lot of damage, and are just generally very bad news for us. So we're going to burn that to the ground as quickly as we can. Our William is basically unhurt, which is great. And yeah, that should be enough to completely make these guys stop. Uh, barracks next, because barracks are scarier than anything else. And what I was hoping is that up here, that there was a relic with these crumbled columns. I was hoping that was what that design would communicate. I seem to be wrong. Well. This is not exactly the scariest fight I've ever had. But preempting them is very helpful. Yep. So, meanwhile, I suppose I should make sure that my resource collection is going okay, and I've got a lot of I've got a lot of empty or uninteresting uh, work here, so we'll let go gather a bunch of gold, I guess. 
Though we'll take one of these and build a market. Because I do need one of those. And now back to the fight. We're doing pretty well, I hope. Uh, and the Herald Raiders should be mostly gone. I want to delete them from the map as quickly as possible. Nay. Everyone is confused by this. Uh, well, that's alright. Uh, we are... Should be having no trouble. Who's attacking us? Oh. Yeah, the knights don't seem to be doing great, but it's cool that they are actually producing people. I'm annoyed that they can produce their specialty units uh, that easily. Definitely is kind of a problem. Puskarls are quite dangerous in this game, they're pretty beefy, but of course our knights have a lot of damage. And William himself is incredibly powerful with 17 attack. Huh, that's, those are a bunch of enemies. I should not be here. We may sacrifice everyone except William. But we may not need to. Okay. Nope, nope, not done yet. I thought we were done. We weren't done yet. Well, they did their best to help assist. Oh, there's... Well. William, go help out. This is ridiculous. Meanwhile, uh, should not get complacent, and... Let's one normal, and that. And I guess that, and we'll take a look at building a university now. Because universities, I think, are one of my favorite, very favorite uh, units here. Cool. So that's all done. Not a whole lot left standing of these guys. Which is probably fine. But my guys are looking pretty well injured, so... It's kind of a problem. Uh, there's a few people up here. So I don't know exactly what their goal is. But we should have no problem f finishing clearing out this area. Let's make sure we're always uh, going up here. And seeing what's up here, so we can take on these last few units. Okay, there's just, like, nothing up here. Ends up completely losing one of our guys. So we'll we'll have William just take on this. Let's see if there's anything here that is a reason. If he can even attack at close range. He cannot. That's handy. Wow, their pathing is so bad. And these guys can retreat back up top and garrison in here. So, there we go. We are close to the end uh, of taking on these guys. We'll see. There shouldn't be a whole lot left to deal with. Uh, where do I have idle, idle people? Cool, we've got a university, which means we have... Uh, we can get ballistics. Which is hugely impactful. 
And let's build a bunch more knights, because a bunch of them died. So let's take advantage of all of our resources here. Okay. And we can build another... we'll build a monastery, I guess. I don't know. Don't think it's that important, but... We will see. Annoyingly, what I have not found is another uh, place for... Go. Uh, well, the big lack I'm noticing is where I can get stone to help build more castles. I may need to just kind of buy it. But monks will be helpful to us too, because monks can heal us, and that's pretty handy. Uh, nay, yo. Hello? What is everyone doing? What is this pathfinding? I am so confused by this game sometimes. Well, they finally made it. Finally get to participate in the game. And trees are our greatest enemy, so... Congratulations. So, yeah, we are close... Well... Actually, I'm close to where I will have to end the stream, but... We'll garrison everyone in this castle first, and this group of knights is going to be more than able to take on uh, the guys here. There's just not that many of them. As long as these guys aren't in range of attacking each other, this is totally fine and this will burn down pretty quickly. Meanwhile, at the university we can get Monks, monks, well, we'll get medicine and then create a monk. I'm not a huge believer in, like, the value of monks in this game. While the memes are excellent, there's definitely kind of a limit to their usefulness. And... I don't know. There's this team, coming back very victorious, but very tired. But, well, we certainly are managing, uh, we've nearly completely taken out Herald's Raiders. You can see there's almost nothing left for them point-wise. And so hopefully they'll resign soon on the grounds that they have no units. There's a monk, that's not what I want. Okay, there's a couple left. A couple eight stragglers that we'll take out. And then we'll actually be close to ending this, I think. We won't actually invade England this time, as tempting as that is. But yeah, I unfortunately like, don't have a whole lot that I know how to say uh, on the Battle of Hastings. For as famous as it is, I really know surprisingly little about it. I've just... my interest lies elsewhere. And plenty of people study that, I'm sure it's pretty easy to find uh, information about that battle. Beyond what I could tell you effectively or what I'd feel confident, uh, like I'm doing my due diligence on. So instead, uh, does anyone in chat here have any questions for me? Either on Vinland or nationalism bullshit, or just in general, seeing seeing how things are. Oh, here's a juicy bit of uh, weirdness. So this is supposed to be the coast of, well, Norway and Stamford Bridge. With their castle, and yeah. Now, Harold uh, ruled, or Haraldur, I should say, uh, ruled from, I believe, Bergen. 
so way up north the coast. But France goes almost all the way there. So yeah, there's supposed to be Denmark, and it's just really, really compressed. Or there's something really screwy with the geography happening. This part is really good. Hastings is there, Calais is Dover is there. Isle of White is down here. But the rest of this is quite bad. We'll have the knights just burn down all of these just to make sure there's nothing left. And then yeah, we'll build up a little bit more. Uh, we should actually be ready for Imperial Age. So we'll do that, uh, get ahead of the crowd. But then we should start, well, we should get a dock out here soon. I want to build it down here so we can stage in the Isle of Wight. So we'll have, we'll actually have, uh, well, the whole groups here so we can tell them to undeploy two out there. I will take our one idle unit and we'll build a dock. Right down there. Because that's probably the safest spot we can build from. And then you just use fishing vessels to explore along the coast. We'll also rebuild our military production sites. Because I'm not going to run people all the way down there. Uh, but... What we can do, well, we definitely want that, even though that's expensive. And we'll put a, uh, we'll get that, and that, and a few more of these, and a few of those. And we won't worry about Siege quite yet. Hmm. And I think we have one monk, so we'll have the monks come down here. Huh, I'm surprised there was someone left. To be honest. Did I miss someone? Hey, I did miss someone. Awesome. And I am now in the Imperial Age, which means I also have a whole bunch of upgrades to do. Throwing Axemen. Units produce faster, which is helpful when we get into a generic production race. University says we can get chemist. We can get. Hmm. I'm curious as to whether we're able to build gunpowder or not. Obviously, gunpowder is super anachronistic, but it would be fun as hell. That's alright, uh, we'll build one fishing boat. I uh, will build a few fishing boats. There's plenty of fish around this area. But one of them's going to go explore the coast here and make sure nothing too. Oh, that's bad. Uh, fire ships, fire galleys. Well, that went poorly. Luckily the fishing ships can kind of sneak by, and then they're going to work on the fire galleys to take out these regular galleys. Oh, there's one more guy here. Okay. William, take care of him, please. Sheesh, so slow. Almost. Hopefully that he'll manage to take on one of them 
successfully. Yeah. Huge. Should actually be enough to completely negate all the other problems. Yo. So we can keep just going along here and exploring. Ha ha ha. There's a lot of coastline here. There's actually a ton of coastline down here. I wonder if there's actually anything useful here. I'll have to find out, won't I? Hmm. Well, so that fire galley just successfully took on two things. That's pretty big. Oh, we have Harold's, Harolders forces there. And then we will continue for a tiny while longer. We're almost at the end though. Uh, though, I seem to be pretty close. Oh, I guess one thing I can say with confidence is the objective there of destroying his castle was not something that uh, William did right away. After the Battle of Hastings, there was no significant mo uh, nobility left. And so... Uh, he did not have to really do a lot of destruction in order to survive. He was kind of able to just take control, and for the most part, London supported him in doing that. However, the limit of that happened with the north of England. The north of England did not like William, and so they continued resisting. Uh, it's also where the largest percentage of the surviving uh, nobility wound up. So the existing nobility, for the most part, was based in that area and were very uneager. Uh, to actually take on uh hmm why did my guys go they're way over here what are they doing over here okay there's another entrance to the Isle of Wight here and there's a staging ground to enter from land okay I explains why they thought this was a good place to go And there's a lot of stone, and a lot of gold, and it's easily defended. Yep, this is a good place to be. That's okay, we are building a bunch of war galleys, so we can start trying to take on the Saxon navy. Though the Saxon navy doesn't seem to have a whole lot of... Uh, ...people up here. Oh yeah, I have chemistry, don't I? Um, can I get gunpowder units? Blacksmith? Nay. Okay, we'll research all those. Get another monk up. And send the monk down here. To heal everyone. And we'll send William all by his lonesomeness, as bad of an idea as this is. But William's gonna go exploring. So yeah, uh, the north of England, after William's conquest, did not like William. And so they kind of r ran resistance to him for 20 years, 
and culminated in such anger uh, that uh, Harold basically did a scouring of the north, which was regarded as exceptionally brutal even at the time. And by doing that, I mean he effectively crushed all resistance, but also significantly depopulated the north of England, something that it took an extremely long time, if ever, for it to recover from. So that's one of the ways like, he completely functionally destroyed the remains of the Kingdom of Mercia, which in the Heptarchy was the most powerful kingdom in of the seven kingdoms of quote-unquote England. Uh, he... so... it's actually quite... Oh, there's another one of these. Okay. I think I'll pr prioritize this. Such as it is. Uh, taking a long time to burn this down, but I expected that. I expect it will just always take a long time. We'll see if we can upgrade these further. Um, hello? There we are, we're just going to sit and focus on these guys. I'm probably not the most engaging uh, Age of Empires 2 player. I definitely am not so great at the multitasking. Uh, speaking, of which, uh, speaking of multitasking, let me grab two of these guys. Two of these guys. Dip off there and head down here. Meanwhile, uh, we're slowly trying to wear down the Saxon Navy by utterly decimating their forces here. They're all loading into ships. We're going to murder these ships quite hard. We should sink some guys. There we are. That should slow them down. Hey, wait. There's one guy left. That's weird. There's a couple guys left. Huh. I thought for sure I got them all this time. Fair enough. We outnumber them, so no big deal. No big deal at all. These are still war galleys. We should be upgrading to galleons. Uh, yo, we do have galleons now. So we have extremely strong units. Uh, way stronger than what we are going up against. Which is great. Uh, we're just kind of steamrolling them. That's weird. Who are you? You're another Huskar. Okay then. The Herald Raiders still technically exist somehow. Don't know how that's happening, but you know, there was like two of them, so I'm not too scared. Also, these guys here are going to build... Well, no, we don't need to build anything here yet. We can head straight onto the Isle of Wight and build out from there. However... We are at 2 hours and 30 minutes, or at this point, which means this is where we will actually end the stream. Regrettably, uh...
Well, cost 1300 food to get out. Okay. The, we are not going to go farther on this time. Uh, I've noticed jo I have something else in less than an hour and I need to make dinner. So, like, it's just not, not going to work. Uh, so, this is where we will leave off. I will save this so we can come back and try and finish this if we want. Where did you return to post? Where did you go? Where did you go? Still, I hope you all enjoyed. The next stream will be on Saturday. Uh, we'll be continuing with Fire Emblem 4, Genealogy of the Holy War, comparing Augustria to the Holy Roman Empire. So I'm going to brush up on my German history a bit, and we will see you then as we continue sinking the Saxon Navy. That being said, we are absolutely going to uh, continue continue here before things get too... Uh, sometime soon we'll continue with Hastings and probably try and do another historical battle. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all on the next one. Bye bye!